Hydroponic grow systems suck. There, I said it. And it's all because of this. That annoying little red light. The one that's constantly reminding you, feed me, buy my special fertilizer, spend money on me forever. And here's the scam. What's the first ingredient in those little expensive bottles? It's nitrogen. What does dirty aquarium water have in it? Nitrates, nitrites, you know, nitrogen. So when I do water changes on my tanks, I dump nitrogen rich water down the drain just to buy another version of nitrogen water. I'm literally throwing away fertilizer and paying for fertilizer at the same time. That red light is a constant reminder that I'm getting scammed. I should be using fish water in the hydroponics, but who really wants to do a water change on their vegetables every week? That's when it hit me. Instead of moving water to the plants, what if I just moved the plants to the water? This isn't some wild DIY project. It's called aquaponics and it's been around since the Aztecs. So surely in the last 500 years, we figured out easy at home systems, right? Well, kind of. $135 and it only fits a 10 gallon tank? Okay, these baskets are kind of cool, but not all plants like constantly being submerged in water. And then we get to these all in one kits. Three gallons? 14 ounces of water for a beta? That's barely bigger than a soda can. Okay, no, 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 no. There's no way they actually put two goldfish in a three gallon tank, right? It's just marketing, right? Oh my goodness, they actually did. And that's all the water flow those poor little goldies get? Why are all these kits so small? These kits are all designed for people, but not for the fish. I wanted something that would actually work, so I built it myself. Now we know what a bad aquaponic setup looks like, so let's define what a good setup looks like before I start plopping plants in tanks. It needs to be a good fish filter. Plants like slower moving water, but we can't ignore the fish, so this still needs to provide real filtration. It needs to be a good hydroponic setup. Look, some plants like mint are completely happy sitting in stagnant water, but not all of them are. A good setup needs to be versatile enough for more than just mint plants. Long-term plant growth. The worst part about those grow pod setups well, after that little red light, is how fast the roots take over and clog everything up. And it should be adaptable. I should be able to drop this in whatever tank I feel like growing extra plants in. And finally, it should look good doing all of it. I don't want some ridiculous contraption that becomes the focal point of the tank. Now I did rank these in order of importance. Obviously, the health of the fish comes first. So let's start there. Hang on back filters. We know them, we love them, they work, they're adaptable, they look fine. This seemed like the best place to start. All I have to do is figure out how to add the plants to the filter in a way that they get the optimal water flow. Preferably after the filter media so waste gets caught before they get to the plant roots. Based on some sketchy math, splitting the filter output three ways would lower the flow speed enough for the plants. So this was the plan. I hang on back filter where the water passes through the filter media then splits to feed three different plants. So I stripped the motor and intake from a regular filter and started designing my own filter body. But the prototypes kept getting bigger and bigger and a lot more complicated and it was clear this was not the solution plus now i had this empty filter body which just felt wasteful especially if i wanted to build more of these i realized a lot of my problems came from trying to move water to the plants but what if i flipped the script and moved air to the plants instead sponge filters these work by pumping air into the tank as the bubbles rise, they create a vacuum that pulls water through the sponge. Could the power of bubbles solve this problem? This actually simplified everything. Water wants to stay in the tank, so I was constantly fighting it to move it where I wanted it to go. But bubbles want to rise, so if the plants are already in the tank, I just need to guide the bubbles to the plants. With a constant supply of fresh air, I could grow plants that would normally drown underwater. Time to start designing. The design I settled on was this, a floating planter with space for two 3-inch planter cups. This would provide plenty of space for long-term plant growth. A hole in the top for the air tube to get down into the water, and channeling on the backside so the rising bubbles would split and divert to the two planters. It was a much simpler design than before, but I needed to figure out if it would even work. It was time to test. I didn't want to sacrifice any plants just in case this thing sank to the bottom of the tank immediately but I needed to make sure it could actually support the weight of two plants. So as the saying goes, when in doubt, throw golf balls. This was my ballast to make sure the planter would float. Also floating, glow-in-the-dark golf balls, which I will be keeping in mind the next time I'm on the course. 
I had to make some modifications. For example, the ballast was pretty much fully underwater, which meant so would the plants. And not all plants would be happy with that situation. So I modified the design to make the planter cups sit a little bit higher. And now the plants would only be partially submerged, just what I wanted. The next test for this planter was to see if the bubble trap would actually work. I ran a larger tube from the sponge filter into the bottom of the planter. So instead of releasing the bubbles into the tank, they're forced straight into the planter, where they would be split between both plants. In theory. This was the moment of truth. With the air pump on, the bubbles were fully being captured in the larger tube, so air was at least making it to the planter. That part of the design was working, but what about the channeling? Well, that appeared to be working too. There was air bubbles coming out from both sides. I think it's time for a real test. A live tank with live plants. Since I was just building a test tank, I wasn't going to do anything fancy. I used leftover gravel and some random rocks from old builds, and I played with them until the layout looked decent enough. One problem, the planter was free floating around the tank. So I 3D printed these little hooks to keep it in place. They let the planter rise and fall with the water levels while keeping it anchored in one spot. And for those of you already typing out a comment about plastic leaching into the water or something, I used food safe filament, don't worry. Now the very last thing my setup is missing that all other hydroponic grow systems have is a light. Hyger sent me this one for free to review. First impressions, it's a sleek design with tons of controllability. I've had good growth and color from their other lights before and I'd expect the same from this one. What I didn't tell Hyger is that I'm using it to grow a vegetable garden instead of aquatic plants. So yeah, this is actually a can aquarium lights grow regular plants review. Sorry Hyger. Aquarium lights usually sit right on top of the tank, but that doesn't leave much room for plants. So I 3D printed some brackets to raise the light. The plants now have about 9 inches of space to grow, and if I need to, I can print some taller or shorter brackets. We'll just have to see. I connected the larger tube to the sponge filter and cut it to length. Then I ran the air line through the planter, through the larger tube, and connected it to the sponge filter. There we go. Now the SpongeBob golf balls can grow big and strong. Before I can add the plants, I need a fertilizer source. Keeping it simple for the test tank, I got a small school of glow light tetras. They're not as flashy as other tetras, but they have a good amount of personality, and I'm a sucker for a good schooling fish. After giving the fish some time to settle in and uh, fertilize the water, it was time to plant. This poor carrot has completely outgrown its hydroponic starter, so let's give him a new home. I wanted to remove the carrot from the moss plug, but with how tangled the roots were, it quickly became one of the most tedious things I've ever done. Eventually though, I freed the carrot and most of its roots, and I placed it in a 3 inch net cup. To help hold the carrot up, I filled in the gaps with clay pebbles, a job that soil normally does. When I dropped the carrot into the tank, the planter had no issues staying afloat. So I guess golf balls really were a good weight estimate after all. Peeking under the planter showed the bubbles were reaching the carrot roots just as planned. For the second plant, I really wanted to avoid another moss plug headache, so I bought a lettuce plant from the store. The risk here is that the carrot was already used to living in the water, and the lettuce would need time to adjust. But that trade-off seemed worth my sanity. The only prep work for the lettuce was to completely remove the soil from its roots, then plant it the same way as the carrot, with clay pebbles providing support. And there's the setup, all finished. The bubbles weren't just powering a filter anymore, they were powering a vegetable garden, with both plants getting a steady supply of fresh air and fish fertilized water. I did add an air stone for some extra surface agitation to the tank, but I don't think it was actually necessary. It only took a week for the carrot to reach the light and start burning itself. This light does run a little warm, but that's also some insane growth for just a week, so well done, Hyger. Meanwhile, the lettuce was looking a little wilted, but like I said, it needs time to adjust to life in the water, so we'll see if it bounces back. By week two, some new lettuce leaves were starting to emerge, and it seemed the plant was beginning to adapt to its new watery life. 
The carrot, too, had learned its lesson about flying too close to the sun, so to speak, and had started sprouting new growth rather than continuing upwards. And both plants were growing some pretty impressive root systems into the tank. Week 3 was where the system was really hitting its stride. The plants continued to grow, both up towards the light and down into the water. At this point, I haven't done a single water change since planting, relying only on the spiderweb of plant roots to filter everything. And the fish were more than happy with it. It was time for a little maintenance though. I trimmed off the lettuce leaves that hadn't made the watery adjustment, and I decided the tank needed a pop of color. I bought a moss ball, which floated, so I threw it out, but I have a better idea. The roots gave this shy little guy plenty of cover to feel safe. Week 4, the harvest. By this point, the lettuce was the stronger of the two plants, mostly because the carrot kept growing, burning itself, then pouting for a few days. But the big question, did the fish grow me a carrot, or am I just eating lettuce for dinner? Right away, those root systems looked promising. I'd say this experiment of, can aquarium lights grow regular plants, was a success. Thanks again to Hyger. I'll leave a 10% discount link in the description if you want to grab one of these lights for yourself. Anyways, back to the harvest. Let's start with the carrot. The top layer of clay pebbles came out easy, but the rest felt stuck. It looks like they're rooted in place. Hang on. Are you kidding me? That's actually a big purple carrot. Let's take it out, get everything untangled, and see just what we've got here. Okay, so it turns out it's actually two carrots, a big purple one and a little yellow sidekick carrot. I'll replant the yellow one and throw it back in the tank. It's not big enough for the harvest yet. This purple one though, is way bigger than I expected. Now that one's dinner. I'll grab a few fresh lettuce leaves and make a little fish powered salad. The plants can go back into the tank to keep growing and filtering the water. And I will be enjoying the fruits, well, vegetables of the fish's labor. Thanks for lunch, little guys. It took a while to get here, but the final design is simple, easy to use, and it works. Would you try this? Do you see ways it could be improved? Let me know in the comments below. If enough people are interested, I would love to offer this as a kit and see what you all decided to grow. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.